I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Oh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday's Assembly. And you had a little poetry reading there. That was a poem called Daffodils by a very, very famous poet called William Wordsworth. And he was so inspired by the daffodils' beauty that he wrote a whole poem about them. But as always, children, I mean, daffodils are marvellous, aren't they? They are a beautiful sign of spring. Um, these ones are not from my garden. Um, these ones are from the supermarket. Um, and these must have been brought in, I think, from a, a slightly warmer country because my daffodils are nowhere near blooming yet. But as always, we like to find out more about the things um, around us in the world. And it's very good to have an inquiring mind. So I've been researching a little bit about daffodils. And then my first fact for you, you should know this. Uh, how do daffodils grow? Well, do you remember when we planted our hyacinth bulbs uh, earlier in the year and some of those have bloomed? Well, daffodils also um, are grown from bulbs. Oh, this is a, another new book that we've got in our house, uh, Botanicum, and it goes through all the different types of plants. And there's a whole page on bulbs. So those are bulbs and they sit under the ground and they stay there all the time. And year after year after year after year, the flowers and plants that they produce come up again. So our daffodils here have been grown from bulbs. Now, my next daffodil fact, not sure anyone will know this. Your parents might. Do you know what the real name is for daffodils? Because daffodils is just an English name. I will tell you. The Latin name and the proper botanical name for daffodils is Narcissus. Narcissus. And daffodils were originally um, native to countries like Greece in ancient times. So about 200, 300 BC, um, the ancient Greeks and then the Romans cultivated these and brought them over to England when they came over here. And that got me thinking, hang on a minute, I know that name, Narcissus. I'm sure that Narcissus was... Uh, there was a story about Narcissus being really, really vain um, in the Greek myths. Now, year six, um, after half term, you'll be studying ancient Greece and you'll have to learn a lot about Greek myths. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if these Narcissus, these daffodils, were named after the man or the boy Narcissus in ancient Greek times. And do you know what, children? They were. So I'm going to read you. I'm very excited because I get to open this beautiful book and I've not opened this for such a long time. It's our big bumper book of Greek myths. And I'm going to tell you the story of Narcissus and how the daffodils got their name. Uh, but the first thing, just to tell you in case you don't know anything about the ancient Greeks, is that thousands of years ago, the ancient Greeks told each other lots and lots of stories, stories of gods and monsters, heroes and heroines, and the myths have been passed down to us now through generations. But the very tales themselves go back to the very beginnings of time. So, today's story from our Greek myths book, when I can find the place, is a story called Echo and Narcissus. It's a good story. Have a good listen. Echo was a mountain nymph and a terrible chatterbox. All day and almost all night, streams of words would pour from her lips. It wasn't as if she even had anything sensible to say. Most of the time it was nonsense. She didn't mean any harm, but her constant babble could be rather irritating. One summer's afternoon, Echo was chattering away to herself as she wandered through the mountains where she lived. Oh, isn't it a lovely day? Oh, just look at the sunlight on the tree. Doesn't it make you smile? She babbled. All of a sudden, the goddess Hera appeared, bustling down the pathway in a tremendous hurry. She stopped when she saw Echo. There she is, there's Echo. Have you seen my husband? She demanded. 
Oh, hello, Hera. Isn't it a lovely day? I was just saying how lovely it was when... Never mind all that, Hera interrupted crossly. Have you seen my husband? Oh, your husband Zeus? Well, of course I have. I've met him once or twice, Echo babbled. He's a very handsome god, isn't he? I always thought he was very handsome. I don't know of any two gods who suit each other more than you... Have you seen him today? shouted Hera, turning red in the face with frustration. Oh, it would be just as pleasant to see him today as any other, Echo replied brightly. I think it'd be pleasant just about any day of the year to see your... Hera couldn't stand it any longer. She seized the nymph by the scruff of her neck. Stop talking nonsense, she yelled. From now on, you won't be able to prattle on like this to anybody. In fact, you won't be able to say anything at all apart from repeating what anyone else says to you. Is that absolutely clear? Absolutely clear, said Echo, as timidly as a mouse. Hera let her go and stormed away. Echo spent the rest of the day alone and in silence, unable to speak a word. At first she thought she might be suffering from shock, but the next morning she tried to speak and she still couldn't squeeze a single sound past her lips. Her heart sank. Hera had meant every word. Only when a little bird landed on a nearby branch and twittered merrily at her could poor Echo speak. Tweet, tweet, she repeated miserably back to the bird. Later that day, she was wandering silently along a rocky path when she bumped in a into a young man coming round the corner. He was so handsome that she stopped in her tracks and smiled at him. For Echo, it was love at first sight. Unfortunately for Echo, the young man, Narcissus, was so handsome that he was used to people falling in love with him and it had done his character no good whatsoever. What do you want? he asked rather rudely. You want, want you, you want, was all Echo could say. Want me, do you? Everyone wants me. I'm Narcissus, scoffed the vain young man. What makes you think I could love you? I could love you, Echo repeated hopefully. Well, I could never love you, snapped Narcissus. Love you, was Echo's sad reply. Poor Echo was so in love with Narcissus that she couldn't bear to leave him. She trailed after him, unable to say anything other than repeat what he had said. Narcissus grew very tired of her, and because he wasn't the kindest of young men, he told her so in no uncertain terms. Eventually, unable to get rid of her, Narcissus simply took to ignoring her. He was thirsty from all the walking he'd done that day, so when he came to a clear mountain pool, he crouched down to drink from the still water. As he drank, the sun came out from behind a cloud and shone brightly into the pool, showing Narcissus his own reflection. He'd never seen it before. Narcissus was amazed. And now... As he bent to drink, it looked as if his lips were meeting those of another person towards him in the pool, leaning towards him in the pool. He sat back in surprise. Did you just kiss me? He asked the face in, the, in the, his reflection. The face in his reflection looked every bit as surprised as he was and mouthed the same words. Oh, I don't mind, Narcissus said shyly. You're lovely. I think you're beautiful. You're beautiful, Echo repeated wistfully behind him. But Narcissus only had eyes for the face in the pool. He thought he was so handsome that he admired the reflection even more than people in real life. He bent forwards in a rush to kiss the face again, but in his eagerness he broke the calm surface of the pool and the face disappeared. Narcissus was filled with despair. Won't you be mine? he cried out. Be mine, Echo repeated mournfully. There he is. Silly, vain Narcissus falling in love with his own reflection. What a vain and silly man. The water fell still and the reflection appeared once more. Narcissus stared at the sad face before him. Tears welled up in the boy's eyes just like those of his own. It was then that Narcissus re realised who the face was. It's me, he whispered. I'm in love with myself. I'm in love repeated Echo's barely audible voice. Despite realising his mistake, Narcissus still couldn't drag himself away from his own reflection. He remained there, staring longingly into the pool until night fell. Day after day, he lay there beside the pool, the rest of the world entirely forgotten.
don't think this is going to end up well for Narcissus. Echo couldn't bear to leave either. She watched with despair as the young man she grew, she loved grew pale and thin. Gradually, the bloom faded from Echo's own cheeks and her face paled until she could barely be seen in the harsh sunlight. In fact, soon her body itself began to fade. Gradually, she pined away for her love until she was nothing but a voice on the breeze, repeating its every sigh. Not that Narcissus noticed. He was completely absorbed in, in himself. He watched his own cheeks grow, grow paler and thinner and his eyes burn with ever more feverish love. Eventually, Narcissus dwindled away to nothing at all. In his place, by the side of the pool, a yellow flower grew, which has been known by his name ever since. The Narcissus. As for Echo, well, her voice remained blown by the wind to different parts of the world. And being a mountain nymph, she prefers to haunt mountains or rocky places. If you call out in places such as those, sometimes you may hear her mournfully repeating your words back to you. Well, I never. There's an amazing Tuesday fact, isn't it? So the daffodil is the English name, but they came from Greece um, and Rome. And they were named, they still are named, their proper name is Narcissus. And they were named after the very vain young man in our Greek myth today. So there you are. That's Tuesday's facts for you. God bless daffodils. That's what I say. Have a lovely day. See you soon.